Love podcasts, hate nonsense. It's the Politics Joe podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Oh. There it is. There it is. I hate that so much. It's like you never left. Uh, enjoy your Super Bowl watch party, Ed. Yes, <laughs> I did. I got steaming drunk eating buffalo dip. Cheered on. No wings? The Dallas Cowboys. Just the dip? To victory. He knows that the Dallas Cowboys won in the Super Bowl. He's doing a thing. Oh, is it, I, also, it a bit? I also literally didn't watch it. I was asleep. Ava, is Patrick Mahomes now the GOAT? I, I, I have to be honest. <laughs> the only content I've seen is uh, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. I didn't quite realise until today how deep your knowledge of Taylor Swift. I knew you, oh, I knew she, you really liked her. She is immersed in the law. But you were like, you were in real time fact checking Ollie's points about Taylor Swift. <laughs> It's that's pretty, the that's the, le that's the least of it. If I mention Taylor Swift anywhere else, like might be in Joe content, might be in other content, I will get a text message from Ava Santina about it. <laughs> I mentioned in passing. Uh, it was a couple of weeks ago now. Someone someone wrote a piece and then it's seen, five ten in the morning. Yeah, it's ten, ten, five, ten past five in the morning, and I mentioned in passing. I can't remember what it was about. Um, someone had written a piece. I think it was about Taylor Swift, or it was about. It's in the new states. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, more broadly about kind of. Oh, feminism and Taylor Swift. Feminism and Taylor yeah. Swift. Mm. Yes, and I referenced part of it in a bit of radio, mm -hmm. and I in the break I looked at my phone and there was a text from Ava <laughs> being like, "Yeah, I read the piece. Wasn't that impressed?" <laughs> Mm. Ava's fact checked that article and is getting it published in the New States, but no spectator, just to so she knows spiked. about it. Uh -huh. <laughs> spiked. <laughs> so she knows. So she knows about it. Um, we'll talk. Should we talk? We'll talk about the Super Bowl in a moment, shall we? Yeah. Should we catch up on the weekends first? When yeah. I asked you how your Super Bowl party was, it was sort of a coded way of saying, "Did you have a nice weekend?" Extremely coded. I, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were just making pretending that I had a Super Bowl party. Yeah, it was good. I was at um, the Scotland Rugby on Saturday. In Great Edinburgh. game. It was a good game, unless you're Scottish. Like most things are good, unless, <laughs> <laughs> unless you're Scottish. In which case we make them miserable. <laughs> Do things to extremes. Um, Shame me Scottish. But good good vibes? Yeah, it was good fun. Other than the result. Uh, there was a guy, a French guy, sitting a few rows in front of us, who every time Finn Russell made a mistake, stood up and just went like that. <laughs> and then went to you? To like no, the just like, no, to, to Finn Russell. It was, he was like... <laughs> 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 and then he stood up when Fran scored. He stood up and was like oh, to the crowd. <laughs> People were chucking things at things at him. Your dad? My dad was chucking things at him. That's His great. dad yeah. threw Ed at him. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Get a, him, son! It's a well worn routine. <laughs> Ed, Ed was showing me how to throw a rugby ball the other day. So did he throw you like that? Yeah, I was like twisting. What Ed, Ed was like, you hold the front. No, 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 caress the front. Twist from the back. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been pass. Yeah. And I was like, this is a new technique for me. You got it in the locker? No, I was, no, no. I think I gave one attempt and I, I decided I was, if I'm not good at a sport, I don't want to engage with it. There's a rugby ball just off, off set, isn't there? We could go and get it and you could show everyone your spin. No, 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 I couldn't. I really <laughs> can't do it. I've got like, unless I'm going to be very good at something, I don't want to do it. Which you can insert the joke here. Well, why are you doing politics? <laughs> it's always good to have your hater's voice in your own head <laughs> no, so, you can, so you can in real time caveat what you're saying yeah it's mad up here uh -huh. man <laughs> don't, don't come in you won't like it um, I was, you were in Cornwall I was in Cornwall yeah had a very restful time I'll tell you what is this normal Does this? What, I, I had a massage which was good they don't like you off normally no <laughs> <laughs> You have to ask for that. You have to pay the extra five. <laughs> don't pretend. Yeah. Don't pretend you didn't ask for that. <laughs> you have to leave um, like a little cross in the corner of your. <laughs> oh, I didn't tick the box. Yeah. yeah. Um, she did, however. She, she just got my ass out for the whole massage, <laughs> <laughs> which has never happened to me before. <laughs> Not even sort of like. A no fault. Or, no, she pants down. <laughs> Wait, you like, had pants on and she removed them? I had my them. pants on, she, she took them down. <laughs> like she was wiping your arse. Like you're, like you're a baby being changed. No, I don't think that's normal. No, she was, she was massaging my buttocks. Like elbow, she was fully in. You must have been carrying a lot of tension there. 
She said that. Oh. <laughs> she actually said that afterwards. Was it licensed? <laughs> <laughs> Massage after dark. Ollie stumbles into a pub. Can I do a massage? <laughs> no, she was afterwards, she was like sweating and <laughs> panting. Her glasses had missed, had fucked up. Stop it. Yeah, they had. She Like during the massage. That is so funny. It was all above board. My wife was on the table next to me. Mm -hmm. So. Did she have the same treatment? No, she had, she had, she wasn't having a massage so they didn't feel the need what to was she doing sitting watching you as well he's been spanked <laughs> she's making like notes. she's like <laughs> yeah <laughs> making <laughs> notes um she's like your dad <laughs> <laughs> but the masseuse afterwards said oh you have some serious issues and you need like three or four sessions back to back. Yeah, they always say that. That's how they get you. But, but that's the thing. I'm not from Cornwall. No, but so she's no, not going to get any trade out of it. I had a massage in well, the borders before Christmas. And the guy was like, oh, yeah, you need several more massages. I was like, you're just trying to get me to come back to you. You're just, you want more business. My, my body's perfect. I don't, <laughs> I don't, need I don't, I don't want to be judgmental, but I can imagine a massage, a masseuse in, on the Scottish borders is very different to the one that Ollie found in Cornwall. Why? You just imagine them being a bit Have firmer. <laughs> <laughs> she was firm, let me tell you. Have you ever had a Thai massage? Yes. No. In Thailand? Yeah. It's the see when um, the woman, so it was a woman was about four foot ten. Yep. Giving me a massage. And at one point. She bent you up like a pretzel. But she, no, yep. she, she told me to, cr to sit cross legged. Yeah. Sat, put, planted one foot in between my legs, put me in like a seatbelt hold, and just threw me over her shoulder <laughs> to crack my back. I'm like, this, my, the right side of my back. Cracked like nothing you've ever heard. I was howling. I was like, "That's the funniest thing that's ever happened." <laughs> she was like, "Again." <laughs> so go back in the same position. She goes to the other side, and goes like that to the seatbelt over my left shoulder. Throws me over the shoulder again. Back doesn't crack, and she's like, "Oh!" -ho. <laughs> <laughs> and makes me do it again. <laughs> Just this woman judo throwing me. <laughs> yeah, I you, lived with a masseuse for a while. You learn a lot, don't you, about Thai culture. And I guess universal suffrage when you when you get a Thai massage. What what like the vote? Yeah, like like a woman's <laughs> capacity for vengeance. Like, <laughs> oh. like the suffragettes. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I can have... see where that woman jumped in front of that horse. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. But like a very unassuming four foot ten Thai lady who is probably like at least sixty. They're often quite gnarly mm -hmm. and they're all sort of sat in like when I was there anyway. They'll be sat in like the corner of the room, all drinking tea, like looking at Facebook or something and giggling. And then you come in and they just sort of like crack their hands <laughs> <laughs> and make mincemeat out of you. Like yep. literally, like bend you up like a pretzel, stand on top of you. Do they do that to you as well? Do they have the Probably. ropes above? Yeah. Oh, they have the ropes. Yeah. The, 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 she didn't need them. <laughs> <laughs> and then they stand on top of you and yeah, make mincemeat of you out, out of you for an hour. How does that relate to universal suffrage? I just think basically people you underest people underestimate women sometimes, don't they? And actually, that four foot ten woman will fuck you up in the at the ballot box, at the ballot box, <laughs> and in the massage parlor. Get you a girl who can do both. Can vote and give you a massage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is the point. I don't think this is as insightful as you think this is, Ollie. <laughs> no, it was meant, it was just an offhanded comment. It was meant to be a joke. I wasn't actually. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, don't, I don't think there's like I don't think there's deep and meaningful lessons about suffrage in the massage parlor. Uh -huh. I think you did think that until you until you voiced them out loud. It's just a joke. Yeah. Um, where was I going with that? Yeah, she said I had a lot of gristle under my shoulder, uh. which I've never heard before. What does that mean? She said you got a lot of gristle under your scapula. Like that arse sausage. <laughs> <laughs> You've eaten too much arse sausage and it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's found its new hope. Yeah. Your body can't digest shoulder, it. Yeah. Your body needs to store it somewhere. It's underneath your shoulders. Two fat colons on his <laughs> shoulders. You've got like wings. <laughs> Growing your scapulas and they're like six inches long. What did we think of the Super Bowl? Truth be told, I did not watch a single minute beyond... You watched the highlights? I watched the last five minutes because this is mental. The highlights on YouTube are 21 minutes long. That's not highlights. That's a short TV program. <laughs> I don't have time to watch that. I like, I like that before the show, we were like, we're going to talk about the Super Bowl. You know, it's positioning cultural hegemony. And Ed has taken that to be like, 20 minutes is too long for a highlight package. It is. Far too long. You need to, well, we need to talk to ourselves then because we've definitely rolled out more than that before. <laughs> <laughs> like, are, you, are you joking? Every single highlight package of a select committee is like two hours long. 
<laughs> the Slack community was two and a half hours long. Yeah. All of this is so just, good. And not because I'm just, just not cards. watching it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 45 minutes of aim cards. Um, but you're, I guess you're right. 20 minutes is what? That's a third of the game? Well, what I learned yeah. today was that there are four four 15-minute quarters in it, which is an hour. But Ed and I were talking about when we were in the States and we went to see football games and I was confused because I was like, I swear they were like three or four hours long. Mm. Um, it's because they stop play. So they, they do a little move, a little dalliance, and then they stop and then reset. That's a lot of downtime, a lot of yeah. looking at nothing at all. So what were you doing when you went to the ground to watch the game? <laughs> no no i mean it just you know I, I would mainly go for the tailgate so i drink quite a lot they do then, say that don't they yeah they and then i if mm. i ever actually did go in which was very rarely but if i did go in i'd be like what's going on it's and quite then expensive support. isn't it to go no not it's college student. college oh. it's and, expensive um, if, you're not, if you're not a student but it's not well anyway i would go in inside and then i would look at the two teams and decide which one was more attractive and then i would root for that team Okay. That was how I would go about. You didn't, just, you didn't just root for Chicago? Huh? You didn't just root for Chicago? But. Well, because sometimes there would be like, I think, unless I've got this completely wrong, I'm pretty sure there was once that there was two Chicago teams playing. Is there not just the Detroit Lions? No, that's a different city entirely, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's in, that's, that's a different state, actually. <laughs> Chicago Bears. Is that it? In Chicago? Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's NFL rather than college. Two teams would be baseball, wouldn't it? White Sox, Red Sox. It's actually, yeah, White Sox, Cubs. It's actually quite possible that I'm thinking about baseball. <laughs> 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 it's entirely feasible. Um, I actually ended up at the World Series. The um, When they won? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, I did. Uh, totally. Uh, I went I went on a date. To the World Series? Yeah, like Americans are really weird. They like, when they take you like on a date, they want to like go and do like an activity. And I'm like, oh, okay. I want to get well, back I'll go watch drunk. this fucking rounders game. When can we go for a drink? <laughs> As it's like the most the most important Chicago victory in 100 years or whatever it was. I don't know if that's it's the same for the World Series, but I understand going to the baseball is actually like quite cheap. Like it costs like it costs like five bucks or something to get Does tickets. It? Yeah. It's because there's so many games. Yeah. Because they just played like five in a row. I feel like it was the Red Sox at the World Series. That the Cubs beat. Or maybe it was the Cubs. The Cubs, the, the year that you and I were in America, the Cubs won the World Series. Gosh, honestly, this is exhausting. Like, <laughs> I, I just, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, should we talk about the Super Bowl as, as a cultural moment? Yes. Red Sox are in Boston. It's the White Sox that are in Chicago. Yeah. Thank you for listening. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I think, here's my cultural take before we get to the Taylor Swift stuff, which I'm mm. sure we'll cover. I think the NFL is basically the only thing that's keeping TV alive in America anymore. I really? Think, yeah. I think live sport is obviously basically foundational now, right, to, to linear TV. Mm -hmm. um, it's essentially the only thing left, I think, other than perhaps the news and reality TV that, that is in any way a point of view for most people. And reality TV, it's kind of wavering now anyway, right, because you can go and watch... Love Island on ITVX or mm -hmm. The Traitors on iPlayer. Um, so it's pretty much just live sport that makes people turn on the TV at a certain time to watch whatever is on it. And I think the NFL is essentially that for America. The Super Bowl is the most watched TV program in America. I think it's like 100 million, 150 million or something every So what, one year. in three people watch it? Yeah. Um, and what are the other two doing? Well, boy <laughs> <laughs> potting because it's gone woke. Oh, has it? Yes, yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's work. And um, they do take the knee off in it. Well, I think if you think about like the other, the second biggest TV audience, which I think is for the Oscars over there, and the way that the Oscars no longer sort of occupies the same sort of cultural space, and in a way feels as significant as the Super Bowl still does, and in fact the Super Bowl increasingly does, and that demonstrates the power of the NFL. And what's to say? What's to say the NFL couldn't just say, you know what? Actually, sorry, uh, cable news channels. We're going to go with Apple TV. We're going to do because they could they could literally take the money and run right. They could go no. We're going to put all of the NFL on Netflix now. Yeah, but you I know? wonder. There's but everyone has it, don't they? Like Nickelodeon had their stream of the of the NFL. So I think to buy out every other, you'd have to buy out every other provider. Oh, at which point that'd be billions and billions of dollars. But what he means, it's not like free to view, <clears> like how you can like you know you have to have certain matches need to be on ITV or mm -hmm. or BBC here. 
Yeah. They don't have that kind of... Yeah, you have a lot more power with where you put it, right? I think they could sell the broadcast rights to a streamer and probably pull the rug on basically the entire American um, TV network business model. So they could they could they could put it like Tucker Carlson on X. <laughs> that could go real well. And they could that just could go real well. Did you watch the coin toss? Yeah. Did you, did you watch it? I watched it mm, Friday. Yeah. What do we think? I am um, an insane. Bit that, that was a man me. really out of his depth. Tucker you know? Carlson. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> Putin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, yeah. You know, sorry, Putin was more in mind. Like, <laughs> I never read a mind like that, Tucker Carlson. <laughs> but do you know He's something? He really made me change my mind about Ukraine. <laughs> the, the the discourse over here about it was driving me. It was like becoming my bugbearer of the week. That of that week. That's of a new course, segment. it refreshes every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> but um, could be. Yeah, we should do that. Bugbearer of the week. Jingle, yeah. little jingle now. Santina's bugbear of the week. Yeah. Well, where do I begin? <laughs> um, Go off, Queen. It's been another week on Hell Island. Um, <laughs> what bothered me was when they were discussing it on the BBC was the sort of derisive and condescending terms in which they were discussing it. So it was, oh, well, if we'd been allowed the access, it would have been a much better interview because we know how to interview properly, mm. whereas Tucker Carlson doesn't. I just thought that was... In, incredibly self bloviating I just it really Ooh. yeah it Good really word. bothered me yeah. but, but you have to understand like it's like funnier when I when I like go out of body and I realise that I'm like in my kitchen listening to Radio <clears> 4 <throat> which is normal if I'm ever in the house that's mm. what's going on and I'm just like walking around the kitchen like just fucking outrageous this that's and I'm just <laughs> shaking my fist at the radio I, d I disagree with you I think I think the Russia ch chose Tucker Carlson because they knew it would be shit that's why they did it. They've, they've had all these requests Disagree. from Har from Har from. I think they chose the. I chose the biggest audience. Years. I think they chose the biggest audience, and they chose chose him because not only would he have been quite um, de uh, deferential to him, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have cut it the way that a traditional linear news channel would have done. But he got his entire. It'd be his own program. Voice out. It would be. It would be like a BBC meets Vladimir Putin. It'd be like an hour long interview. It would just be like a clip but that line about him not wanting to invade poland was the most we've heard out of the kremlin this entire time and you've had people for the last two years commentators saying he's only doing crimea because he wants to get to poland and now for the first time you actually hear it from him i don't want poland yeah but do you believe it that doesn't matter but i mean what what mm. i'm saying is it was the most insight we've had into putin this whole time i think people um Rip the piss out of Tucker Carlson, and there is a lot for which he is rightly derided. Mm -hmm. Do not forget that he has interviewed plenty of American presidents. He has done hours and hours and hours of primetime broadcasting. He, in, initially, during the pandemic, I don't know if you remember this, he's basically one of the only people talking about um, the possible lab leak theory. At the time, he was literally being derided as, like, you are a racist. You're, you're spouting nonsense about China. Lo and behold, two years later, what's everyone saying? Oh, yeah, it's actually probably quite quite possible. We'll never know, but it seems quite likely. Like, you you can mock him rightly for a lot of things, but equally to be like, no, Tucker Carlson is completely pony and um, not up to the task of interviewing Vladimir Putin. I think is, I think that's also slightly slightly disingenuous. But then who? But, the, I, but that's not even. I think it's the reverse. Who would you prefer to? The BBC or Tucker Carlson? But there wasn't a choice that. That no, was not the choice the, no, the, that was the, on the, the table. The, the, the Kremlin had the choice. Well, okay. In an ide ideal world, who's interviewing Vladimir Putin? I will tell you why I'm not, like, I love the BBC, but I'm not, like, rushing towards them in this moment. The BBC had the opportunity to interview Elon Musk, and it was one of the worst interviews I have ever heard. Oh, yeah, the that was, questions yeah, that were was dreadful. dreadful. The guy had no idea what he was talking yeah. about. I don't understand how he is the tech editor for North America. He should not have been there. I think they got it on, uh, with that one, I think they got it on very short notice. Yeah. I think it was literally Still, like that. Yeah, I think, no, like, I, I, you're totally right. You would have gone in there and knocked it out of the park. Uh, Ava, you're so right. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that. Um, no, you, no, you're, you're you're right in the sense that, for example, if you're like the Poled in the UK and you happen to chance upon a Rishi Sunak interview, you already know what your first ten questions are because you've been wanting and trying to ask them for the last week. Mm. Um, if you're the North America tech editor, the Silicon Valley editor, you should you should know what your Elon Musk interview looks like before you go before you get the confirmation that's going to happen. You because you should have been you should have been absorbing you psychologically for however long because of what you want to do and achieve. There, like you, there are always I guess you can always say there are people that you would want to interview over someone else. Like uh, if you love. 
Piers Morgan, you might be saying, well, Piers Morgan should have done it. If you love John Simpson, you should say, oh, John Simpson should, you know, oh, Nick Robinson or oh, Michelle should have done it. You know, like you can go and go and go and go and go. The fact of the matter Michel is- Michelle Hussein, that's yes. the only one I would take over Tucker Carlson. Oh, that is not the only person My over Tucker Carlson. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking Queen about? Michelle, number one. <laughs> Prince Tucker, number two. <laughs> the only person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved I, I haven't watched the whole thing because I'm not mental but after I basically <laughs> I did I did <laughs> you watched all two and a half hours of it I did the compilation for this channel <laughs> how long was that highlight reel hey, that was oh that was about eight minutes the perfect length of the highlight reel <laughs> um, well, we need YouTube content <sighs> what was I going to say fucking the, the start of the interview where Tucker asked him a question and Putin goes like are we here for a serious chat or like a, you know, is this talk like show. a light hearted talk show? And Tucker goes like, <laughs> yeah. And then there's silence. I thought that was incredibly funny. Like seeing him, he was so like emotionally overall and like, oh, I don't know how to respond to this. And then I think it was quite shortly afterwards, Putin then goes, you applied, you, you wanted to join the CIA, CIA didn't you? Or, or as I understand, he's like, I understand you wanted to join, you applied to join the CIA. I don't know whether that's public knowledge or not, but I love the idea, if you're Putin, that you've just got the GRU to essentially do like background research <laughs> on like the journalist that's interviewing you. So you can be like, ah, oh, Tucker, I understand you love big, beautiful women. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? just, 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 to like, just to like rinse him in the interview. See, see that CIA thing? I saw that clip before I watched the thing. I was looking out for that bit. I don't think that's real, that bit. Really? I, I didn't see it within the... Did you see that in the video? I thought it was right at the beginning. I d you I, only watched the highlight reel. No, I made the highlight reel. I watched the full two hours. You made the highlight reel yeah. of... Of the two hour interview. And you didn't watch all of it? No, I did watch all of it. He's so saying he can't remember it. But as in, I was looking out for that bit, and I was like... And I also thought when I rewatched that clip, I was like, that sounds like a different translator's voice. Sean I thought, that bit, I thought that bit was fake. Oh, I've been fucking had. But then, but then did I just miss it? Cause no, because then I, then I transcribed it and then looked for it again. I could find it. We should find we should find this out because we'll need to know whether we include it on this. Yeah, well, we can come back to that. Um, yeah, Tucker Carlson will uh, will come after us for accusing him of being in <laughs> applying for the CIA. Um, Ed, it's a just yes. it's real. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Will I get my apology in writing, Ed Campbell? I, I, well, no, but I, just, I give it verbally. <laughs> <laughs> I just give it verbally and it was recorded. The Independent wrote it up, so. Well, that's if, as good if as true. If Is it just wrong, the Independent? Pardon? Is it just the Independent? Oh, stop fucking spinning yeah. on this. Come on, so, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Mail did it as well. So oh, we now go. that a reputable there newspaper's done it, we can uh, Cheers, relax. <laughs> um, do you think future NFL teams will base their recruitment on whether or not players are dating ce other celebrities. <laughs> See, I hate this. <laughs> um, uh, to help with the marketing of their team franchises going forward. Yes. Because Taylor Swift has clearly, clearly ele mental. elevated the Chiefs from being football team to global phenomenon. She hasn't done anything. I think she's actually had zero agency in all of this. I think that she has started dating a man who is on a football team and she has gone to support him as is normal for girlfriends of men. And <laughs> Women too. there has been relentless intrusion into her personal life ever since. She hasn't asked them to put her on the Jumbotron. She hasn't asked them to continuously take photos of her. She, but for some reason, she is to blame for attention being diverted towards her. I actually think it's quite a case in point example of sexism because that wouldn't happen to a man and she's carrying the blame for it. All of those people on Twitter and other social media sites saying that she's ruined football for them. What has she done apart from yeah, dating mental. him? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's not what I was saying. What I was saying was- I really was, felt like you were actually. <laughs> <laughs> what, I was, what I was saying is she, by virtue of being who she is, one of the most famous people on the planet, by going out with who she's going out with, she has created a whole load of interest in this thing that we, amongst groups of people that previously expressed either little to no interest in the Super Bowl, full stop, or go one step further and created a whole host of interest in the Kansas City Chiefs but as a franchise. You're phrasing I don't agree with because 
she hasn't done it. The, the, the NFL agency has created has taken it. away from her. The, yeah. So, so the NFL might be interested in how they can exploit another female to do that, but she is not the reason. Do you see what I'm saying? She is involuntarily the reason. So that I mean that was the premise I was establishing. Yes, whether semi sarcastically saying whether or not teams would base well, I don't their appreciate your sarcasm on such a serious. <laughs> I can yeah look I can I can tell. Um, <laughs> you know, but I mean, are they exploiting her? I would argue they are. Capit- yeah, capitalizing rather than exploiting. Like she's the, the the attention she's getting is not like the her level of fame or scrutiny or attention has. Increased exponentially. I would say it has. There, there, so? There've been like, there's been Kansas City fans who've been like burning effigies of her face, or like, and and other football teams have been doing it too. Imagine if it were were you. You've mm-hmm. got a bit of a public profile now. Imagine we're if similar the, levels, me and Taylor. Yeah, but imagine <laughs> if all of the. I don't know if all of the people from Reddit started taking, took photos every time you went to one of your girlfriend's ballet recitals. <laughs> <laughs> but then I would, I would really appreciate what I was doing for UK ballet and raising the profile. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know? In the, Do you know who put UK ballet on the fucking map? Ed Campbell. Ed Campbell. Did. Do you know what, what the top two selling NFL jerseys in Britain are? Kelsey and Swift. Kelsey and Kelsey. Travis Kelsey and his brother. Mm. And. The brother Jason Kelsey reckons they think they don't realise that he's not Travis Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> there was actually a really, really good um, clip of him meeting Ice Spice. Did you That's see that? Sick. I yeah. think Jason Kelsey's sick. Where he like he goes and hugs Taylor and then he turns and sees Ice Spice and he's like, "A oh, very nice to meet you, man." <laughs> <laughs> and puts his hand out and like shakes. Did, it. did you Did you see him? I think in the playoffs when Travis Kelsey scored, he rips off his shirt has a beer in each hand and jumps into the crowd from the box. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Kelsey's sick. I think he's a Do you ever listen to their guy. podcast? I see clips on TikTok. So yes, I, I could imagine you would like that. Yeah, I can I imagine think, that would be right cool. on your humour. Yeah. yeah, I think they're, I think they're cool That guys. was where it was first decided that, well, that was where he first said that he'd been trying to get hold of Taylor was on that podcast. Really? He made a friendship bracelet for her with his number on it and he didn't get to see her so he couldn't give it to her. And one of her get How do you know all this? <laughs> How do you know all this? <laughs> earlier, listeners, earlier on on the desk, <laughs> <laughs> there is a photo. Fo- it's the same moment. It's Ice Spice. It's Ice Spice and Jason Kelsey and Taylor Swift all together. And there was a tweet that was like, "I can't believe Come Town made this happen." The explanation being, Matty Healy goes on Come Town. He does like racist impressions whilst he's dating Taylor Swift. Um, as Following that, Taylor Swift then does a collab on Karma with Ice Spice, possibly in a sort of, yes, I might be dating this this wrong, but I'm not bad, I'm cool, don't worry about it. And so the tweet is basically alleging, like, it's unbelievable that Ice Spice is now in a box at the Super Bowl with Taylor because of Come Town. I put this forward on the desk, and I am being fact-checked in real time by Ava Santina, yeah. being like, I'm afraid, Ollie, the chronology simply does not stack <laughs> up. <laughs> You didn't even look it up. You were just like... Because? <laughs> off the dome. Why doesn't it work? The, uh, the remix had come out uh, bef- before she started dating Matt Healy for the second time. Dated him the first time in... Uh... Did you date it twice? Yes. You say... Listen, you, uh, you, you date her twice. What? I would date Taylor Swift twice? Yeah, you would, yeah. They dated for the first I, I time when... I don't say no. Um... <laughs> <laughs> they dated for the first time in 2013, just before 1989 came out. And um, second time... Last year, when she broke up with Joe Alwyn, and then there oh, was she meant went back to, be, to Matty. Yeah, there was meant to be two bonus tracks that were written by co-written by Matt, Matty Healy on the new release of 1989, and they were his name was dropped off the album when they broke up. Good lord. Okay. So, in light of that information, sorry, and your clear knowledge, respect, and appreciation of Taylor Swift. Uh, do we think it was appropriate for her to fly by private jet from Tokyo back to America to watch the Super Bowl? The only flight that I have actually think is okay is that flight. The rest of them are insane. taking the piss. She's She took a 13-minute flight the other day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. We'll, we'll talk about this in a second. St. Louis. If you could, mm. if I said, on the tarmac outside right now, <laughs> G6, it will take you to... Winchester? 
Pause man. You know, <laughs> you've, been, you've got that urgent meeting in Norwich. Yeah, sorry, it? Ed. We have to get you back to North Norfolk <laughs> to interview the there's, oldest place in Britain. Even older this time. Private jet outside. It will take you thirteen minutes. Yes, you're getting that flight. Yes, but I've not had a million other private jet flights. Yeah, I think I think my carbon footprint compared to Taylor Swift is. I, I guess yeah. I, I guess what I'm getting at is she, like she flew. She flew from St. Louis to St. Louis. What? She literally flew from like, like one part of it to another. It was a 13 minute flight. That's what the 13 minute flight was. Yes. So like from one airfield to another. Yes. <laughs> Just to get the other side. It's obscene. It was not like a 20 minute drive or something insane no, like that. But, um, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> but what it is? No, no, no. We worked. It. Sean, didn't we add up how long the the. No, it was too, but it was in the st- It was in the area. I'm not saying she flew out of one. Like anyway, that's like it was like an hour cluster, drive isn't it? in the St. Louis area. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what? So so what? I don't. I'm not saying that she should have to fly commercial all the time because I understand there's probably a security risk around that. It's like mm. why you. I wouldn't want her on my flight, for example, if I'm flying like because normal. Of what you would do normal. <laughs> no, no, because I'm thinking. I can't control myself. Uh-huh. No, no, I could. I actually would not be that bothered if I met. I just, oh, like, shut lie. the fuck up. Lie. Like, you know, I'm just worried that Hunter's listening and I really want to be the one that gets sent from Joe to attack <laughs> to cover the stuff in summer. <laughs> I'd be so fine. <laughs> um, but, but um, yeah, like, I mean, you don't... Uh, anyway, she just doesn't need to travel that much and she's been literally w- following her, him around to go and watch his games and I just think that's a, a total waste of, like, you can't, if you can't make it in a commercial flight, you shouldn't go. Yeah. Like you can watch it on TV and also, it's fine. Also with the tour stuff, she dictates the dates and the locations of that. So oh, you could take longer. That's way that's, pre-planned. Yeah, that, that's, that's all been booked in before no, so she I, even I started dating I don't, I don't mean I don't mean in relation to Travis Kelsey. I mean like, even if she wasn't about the Travis Kelsey, she'd be on a private jet every single day. You don't need to do that. You can't, you can't space out your tour. No, no, I under, I understand why she would need to fly private between like like a tour day. I I I can that's fine with me, but it's the the in between the tour dates dotting around all the time. Oh, uh, basically being like you're in Tokyo, you've got three nights off, so I know what I'll do. I'll go back to LA for a couple of nights, yeah, and then yeah, that's what seems I seems gratuitous. Get. Seems gratuitous. I, I I guess what is what is the the acceptable way for someone to travel for something like that, you know? Because, um, oh fuck, what was his name? The guy who came in and was doing environment stuff with us over the summer on the podcast. Fly once every seven years. Oh. What was his name? Take the jump. Yeah. 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 Because they will obviously be like, Neither absolutely be. not. She should not be, <laughs> she should not be flying anywhere. Yeah. She should be walking. She should not be getting you close. <laughs> yeah. oh. But they, you know, um, when you think about some of the sacrifices that other people are having to make, and I'm not just talking about like little sacrifices like we're washing out our pots and stuff like that, but if you think about ginormous co- companies that are having to offset their carbon and sack thousands of workers to go green, when someone like that is just taking jaunts on flights <laughs> everywhere, I think, that, it's just, I think it's annoying. And I think it's really disrespectful, actually. Yeah. Are you going to make that point to her? But anyway, if we could cut all of this out. <laughs> <laughs> there's that student. Taylor, we know you're, list- you're listening. There's that student who's been tracking her, tracking her oh, on Twitter. private jet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the FAA, so he's not. Like, it's publicly available yeah. information, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. She she did him with a cease and desist, but I think there's. They do that with Elon Musk. Elon Musk. He went mental yeah. about it. Didn't he <laughs> privately intervene? Well, he bought Twitter so that he could delete this man's account. <laughs> Wait, that is actually what happened, wasn't it? I forgot about that. Mm. Uh, yeah, kind, kind of. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. Because I remember um, him tweeting at the time being like, you'll soon be gone. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> what a loser. Um, anything else? Usher? Do you want to talk about Usher? I think we've done a lot of Taylor Swift lots, and Super we've done Bowl. A lot of Super Bowl, haven't we? We should probably move things on. You, would, you are so desperate to talk about this A-levels girl. Can we just talk quickly about Trump? Yeah. Because I think it falls into our... Um, not Travis Kelsey. Um, <laughs> why have I forgotten his name? Putin. Who interviewed him? Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson. Carlson um, falls into that because that was another similar gripe of mine what? with the BBC. Okay, go on. So did you hear what he said about NATO? Yes. Yes. And he said that he wouldn't help any country out that wasn't paying their fair share. Yep. What did you make of that? <sighs> I... Uh, Question the usefulness of an alliance of an alliance that relies solely on American military hegemony if 
the man who is quite possibly going to be the next American president publicly says he will not support any of the people in the alliance. Come and get I think, him. Yeah, I think you're basically putting like a full sale sign on like Estonia. Um, <laughs> Free parking. Yeah, for the Russian tanks. Oh. Um, equally, uh, it's, he's making his point in his own unique way. I think it is entirely valid to say you want to be part of um, NATO and should you need to invoke Article 5 and demand that America comes an attack on one is attack on all and you want us to come to your rescue, you cannot conveniently ignore the other part of the NATO Charter which says that you have to spend 2% of your GDP on defence. I think that's a legitimate thing for him to say. Mm. Bob, what, Ava, what's your take? Do you have a take? I'd like to hear yours because you said to me this you morning. You two. No, no, no. Each other here. No, Ava, 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 Someone Ava, go first. Ava said this morning... Wait till you hear my take on this. <laughs> so that's, uh, so that's what I'm waiting for. I can't on. even remember what it was. Are you it, joking? It was, it, I, it, was, it was in time with the BBC thing. Basically, I didn't like the infantilization that was happening to Trump on the BBC this morning. Again, Radio 4. Why, you my were, fist you were radio. batting um, for interesting characters against because, the BBC. Because what annoyed me was I think that is a pretty sensible thing to say. You've spelt that out better than I was planning to. But um, thank you again, but, Ava. But it, I just think that is. <laughs> oh, Ollie, please. <laughs> <laughs> please let me go on to the Swiss private jet. Yeah. Um, Wait, I, is there an opportunity to go on to the Swiss private jet? Is that what we're talking about? I don't about? think so. Yeah. But. <laughs> so, Taylor, if you're, Travis, <laughs> if you're listening. Um, I just, it, they, they were talking about him and they were saying like, you know, this is just one of those things that Trump says that doesn't have any basis to it. And he says it to wind up his supporters and he gets the cheer that he would like. And I was thinking that is that actually feels comfortable. That would feel comfortable coming out of Starmer's mouth. That's not a ridiculous thing to say. That if you're not going to contribute and you can't defend yourself, you shouldn't be in NATO. Mm. I think that's okay. Yeah. And that kind of like Trump said it so it's stupid is so unhelpful because that's how you ended up with the Capitol yeah. Hill riots. That 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 partisan nature when it comes to reporting on him is one of the reasons that leads to the sort of the the ferocity and sort of um die hard nature of his of his fans right is because when he does make legitimate points about things if your default mode of engagement with that is well Donald Trump said it so it must be fucking you know uh, a joke a nonsense or incoherent you know delete as appropriate rather than engaging with the substance and yeah he has obviously a slightly deranged way of expressing himself but nonetheless can you can you seriously say, yes, you should be able to join NATO, not pay the 2% as required, and still expect America to come and defend you? I think that's, that's, like a, that's a reasonable... You might disagree with it. That's fine. You can disagree with that sentiment. But to suggest that it's, you know, a, a mental thing for him to say, come on. Yeah, I, mean, I don't like the entire the conversation, which is basically we should all... Everyone should be arming up. I think that is, that's pretty dangerous rhetoric. But parking that for one second. If we are arming up... <laughs> 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 fucking pony up, son. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ed? Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm somewhere in between in that I think it's le it's legitimate to point out that what Trump has said goes against American foreign policy since the advent of NATO. Mm. And I think that's like the BBC could have used more tactful language to do, do that. I think he's like saber rattling. Or what's the opposite of saber rattling? So like saber putting away. <laughs> Sheathing. <laughs> yeah. He's a, <laughs> no more saber for you guys. <laughs> Unless you bring your own sabers. <laughs> <laughs> like, America's been, like, has essentially been the funding for NATO since forever. Mm. And so objecting to it now when there's a legitimate threat, a, a more and more serious threat threat from, Nus from Russia against this alliance doesn't seem like the smartest thing to do. That's my opinion on, the, on it. I don't think it's necessarily wrong to point out mm. he's going against the orthodoxy of American foreign policy. That's Ed Campbell, Joe's Stop the War Coalition uh, <laughs> correspondent there. Um, I think I'm pro the war. <laughs> sorry, 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 pro. Ed's pro war. Yeah, mm. we'll get there. Um, we've spent so much time talking about the Super Bowl. We don't have, we have a lot of topics to cover. Oh, we better skip that A-level girl. I think then. we're going to have to skip the A-level girl. I will, well, can, can we skip the recession and do A-level girl? I was just going to go to Gove on housing. Can we come back to A-level oh, girl? Oh, come on, let's just let him do it. <laughs> Ed, what's been going on? Why do you hate this school child? <laughs> I don't hate her. I don't. Go I feel ahead. sorry for her. You feel sorry for her? There's a A-level student, 17, and she's doing 28 A-levels. Is that what it is? Yeah. She's sitting 28 A-levels, 25 of what she's doing in her own time. Mm. She's obviously very bright. She's got a very high IQ. She doesn't feel challenged with stuff at school. 
I just think it's a real shame that she's channeling that energy into doing A-level courses, which will have no impact on her life beyond getting into university. There should, there could and should be a lot more constructive things she could be doing. Like playing time. Fortnite. Like playing Fortnite. She could, imagine how good at Fortnite she would be. She'd be sick if she's that, if she's that smart. She could be like the all-time Fortnite player. just feels excessive. I'm, I'm, I don't agree. Really? Yeah, I don't agree with you. Why? Well, I think clearly she's made you feel intellectually inferior. I'm and like, you, you're, so, you're, so, so you're picking on her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ed, I'm sorry no. for it. Ed did tell me that you only have to do five hires in Scotland, but he did do six. Yeah, that's a bigger number than. <laughs> I might as well. I could have done 28. <laughs> Chose not to. It was too sick at to. doing spin passes in rugby, <laughs> <laughs> which I've since shown Ava how to do. I had a girlfriend. Yeah, I had a girlfriend. She went to a different school. She actually had a girlfriend at the same time. <laughs> I had two girlfriends, really. <laughs> <laughs> All my time is taken up with my two girlfriends. My two girlfriends, literature and rugby. I love them both equally. <laughs> Guy who fills the school exams because he's polyamorous. <laughs> Look, Do you if, think- if she is smart enough to take 28 A-levels, uh-huh. and that's what rocks her boat, fucking crack on. But I think the, the point she's making herself is... There should be other things for me to experience and do beyond because she's not she's not socialized or mature enough for university, presumably. She should be able to go there should be like a provision for exceptionally smart kids as well. Where's she from? Stoke, was it? I don't know. Um, Are you were reading on like the Stoke Times or something earlier? No, it's just the Times. Stroud. I think. Stroud. Stroud, I think Stroud. Was the, yeah, she was sorry. a Stroud. Stroud? Stroud or Strood? Is Strood a different place? There's two places, yeah. Is there? Anyway, that's I, I saw, it was such a game with an ST when I was looking over your shoulder on the computer, <laughs> which I often do. Um, I just don't think that that would fly down. I like, well, don't think it would fly in a lot of places. Wouldn't other people in the like kids in the class be like, "Can you calm down?" But like teachers don't want her to do twenty eight levels. Yeah, because that's annoying. Can you? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I've been involved. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, you've got a kid in your class constantly going, I'm not challenged enough. I need to do 28 examinations. You'd be like... Timetabling-wise, that must be a nightmare come May. There's a scene in Gilmore Girls where Paris Geller, who is the, um, uh, like, SWAT, and she's like, this girl, yeah, but in Gilmore Girls, and she has sex, and that ruins her life. (laughs) (laughs) In what sense? Like, she just can't cope with it. She doesn't get into Harvard. It's because this whole she had thing. sex. It's this whole thing. It's part Ed. of the admissions process, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised you don't know that. Oh my God. You and your six hires. Virginity and your rugby spin Are pass. you a Gilmore Girls household? I was, yeah. Mm. So you know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do, yeah. yeah. Have you seen the Kevin and Perry thing where Kevin has sex? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's very funny. It's very funny. Um, Kevin, the teenager, the Harry Enfield so, character, just is a dickhead to his parents the whole time. Typical serial teenager. Loses his virginity, and then he's a real sunshine <laughs> to his parents. It's a good sketch. I'd recommend. So, children, you can study 28 A-levels, or you can have a cultural knowledge like Ed has just demonstrated. <laughs> <laughs> She'll never have seen that. <laughs> Look, I think it's fine, isn't it? You've got, like, an insanely high IQ. You put that to use. You, you, you like, study. You start with your A-levels. Then, you move on to undergraduate. Maybe she'll do a postgraduate. Maybe she'll do a doctoral thesis. And does she need an A-level in film? Yeah, because it's like... what oh, she in Daily Mail. <laughs> <laughs> what's, she, what's she doing? Media studies? <laughs> Fucking <laughs> idiot. What's your IQ? 161. Idiot. <laughs> Media studies? Oh, your like, A-star in land economy. She's doing all them languages, yeah. And then like the best thing that has ever happened to me with Spanish is that like, I can go over there and like I can order some, like I can order una cerveza, por favor. Oh, like, <laughs> stop it. Don't put it on like that. We I'm all just know you saying, speak Spanish. But I'm just saying, what, what else does it... What does it serve you? That's what, that's to, what I'm to be able to speak five languages. We're just having all this. Redundant. That's such a bad example. Yeah, the sorry. languages thing Listen, is, that is, is like a terrible example. example. You've, you've, you've made your own bed there. I've made all my takes now. So really. <laughs> <laughs> she should be watching no, Tucker Carlson on <laughs> X.com. I listened to Donald so Trump. So what can you do? Speak six languages? <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. How's that going to benefit you yeah. in life? Oh. What, will you, what will you do with that? Become a translator? Idiot. <laughs> I feel sorry for her, and I think she should have. She should be, she should be able to think more fulfilling than just reading AQA syllabuses. She can do her film studies, but she can watch like a lot of films on movie <laughs> at once. Yeah. She can interpret different. I can't believe plots. you managed to get me to talk about this. <laughs> to be quite honest with you, <laughs> can we talk about Michael Gove in the Times at the weekend? Yeah, using that like you didn't just lead a conversation about the Super Bowl and Taylor Swift half an hour. So- <laughs> 
<laughs> that's like a significant cultural moment. No, Everyone's what? buying Jason Kelsey's sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, one's, no one has heard about that story until we just told them about it. <laughs> like, literally no one. <laughs> what, the E-level? I've seen a lot of tweets about it. It's very funny. Someone said, I did 28 E-levels and it did me no harm, which I thought was a good line. Got zero E-levels. Was it her? <laughs> <laughs> I've got zero E-levels. Oh, Good you for pulled, you. You pulled that joke with me earlier and yeah. I didn't laugh then either. Well, no, you, you asked me how many I had. <laughs> yeah. Quick, let's do your stupid Only because I knew that you would have been SWAT-like. Who did I find out was a massive SWAT the other day? Oh, yeah. Tucker a Carlson? Anyone good? No, no, someone someone who doesn't work here. Um, so, Michael Gove says, it's hardly surprising that young people are checking out from democracy and don't feel like democracy is delivering them, delivering for them the outcomes they have because um, the British system isn't delivering them anything. They can't get on the housing ladder. Um, I think it's a valid point. What do we think? Can I pose you a question? Goes? Oh, I'd love it if you posed me a question, Ava. Thank you. Let's have some serious discussion rather than this 28 A-level bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm seeing. That's my argument about the 28 levels. No, 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 no. The discussion of it is bollocks, Ed. 28 A-levels. If you put a CV in front of me with 28 A-levels on it, I'm giving that person a no, job. No, you're not. What's her name? What's her name? Manorchima, look me up. I'll hire you. <laughs> we need a videographer, actually. We need oh, yeah. a new presenter for Extreme Britain. <laughs> She can, and she can do it all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> she can speak in Sendai anywhere. It's Green Britain in six languages. And she has one in land economy, because that, so that'll be interesting. <laughs> critical thinking. She's done an A-level in critical That's thinking. That's what I was like, so she's doing 27 A-levels. Ava, you wanted to ask me a question. <laughs> <laughs> Pray right. tell. Where did Michael Gove publish this new proposal? It was in the Times, wasn't it? And where was he interviewed about it sub after? Laura Kay? And what do you think the Should age range? <laughs> what do you think the age range of people who read the Times and watch Laura Kay is? Uh, plus forty-five. So tell me why you're sitting on a podcast, our podcast, that is like a cuck. So many people who are under forty who this policy will actually affect. Yeah. And why are you delivering yeah. the word of Michael Gove? And why is Michael Gove not here himself? Yeah. And why am I sat next to Ed Campbell and not Michael Gove? Did we yeah. ask Michael Gove, to be fair? I did. Did you? I okay. Did. Yeah. I thought, <laughs> do, you to, do you want to see what he said to me in response? <laughs> Go fuck yourself. You'd call me bastard. <laughs> do you know? <laughs> do you know You'll what? get a house when hell fucking freezes <laughs> over, buddy. <laughs> I have no intention of doing this. I'm just telling your parents. It's like the thing that I will. Fuck you and fuck your audience. <laughs> No, no, I'll tell you what, Ed, I would have preferred it <laughs> if he'd have said that to me. <laughs> because this is what he said. <laughs> That's so bad. It's just the prayer emoji. But you know what I realised when you sent me that? Yeah. But namaste. You're not even going to believe it when I tell you. I don't you. know if it is namaste. I said, I, viewer, I said, Michael, you are right that housing reform can win you an election. If you'd like to make the argument to the people trying to get on the ladder rather than their parents via the times, you are welcome on politics, Joe. Are you looking at his number? You haven't saved his contact <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah, no, I have saved his number. Yeah, his number's not on there. Anyway. It's, so you, it's a prayer emoji. Why doesn't, but why won't he come here and talk about, why do you, why are you telling the audience about these new Tory policies? If they're so good, why doesn't he come and speak to the people who it's actually going to affect? I I'm not. There's, I there's, a lot, there's a lot of fear, isn't there? Let's put that, let's put that out there. There's a lot of fear about coming on here. Well, we, we do make you have a massage before you. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Michael, get your ass out. <laughs> Just bum. <laughs> Claire's going to need your glutteral chain. <laughs> Sean comes out with like one of those headbands. <laughs> Head torch. <laughs> we, we pretend it's not Sean. <laughs> He's in his Mai Tai gear. <laughs> um... What were we saying? You, you were annoyed that Michael Gould's not oh, on the podcast. Yeah, well, no, he... I, first of all, I think he would be a great podcast guest. First of all, I think that would be great. Second of all, this, this is how you get them to come on. <laughs> Second of all, I think people are a little bit scared about mm -hmm. coming on. Yeah. Um, Pete, Peter Zamyatin, laughter, laughter is our greatest weapon. Laughter can kill anything, even murder itself, mm -hmm. right? So the risk of being mocked. I think coming, coming on something like this, you, you live and die by your personality, don't you? Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Yeah. 
Like if you're a wet wipe, you're gonna get you're gonna get found out next to the white heat of Ava Santina's <laughs> <laughs> takes That's and really chat. Horrible. I'm being serious. I give one bad take. <laughs> <laughs> one Your bad takes take. have been good. <laughs> Trump, good. <laughs> Girl with five languages, bad. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Gove wouldn't stand up to that yeah. kind of commentary. And <coughs> let's be honest, they've blacklisted us, haven't they? <laughs> ever since ever since the hustings. So yeah, they're, not. they're actually not allowed to come on our show. We've been blacklisted before the hustings. Well, yeah, I mean, in effect. And what did we do? Just point out the things. Well, in what? Well, Ed, Ed actually posed a security risk, I think. Yeah, you see that. Black Ed. See how scary that was? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to. Do you remember when um, we were phoning from the office to be like, Daryl, can you just let them in? Mm. And Should we give like, them context as to what we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, talk oh, about yeah. Ed. You were there, go on. So this was outside the Norwich hostings. For the during the leadership, conservative leadership election in 2022, was that? Yes. Yes. So summer of 2022, me and Harry, our colleague, were going to all the hustings that we could. I had a week's holiday in between, so I actually went to three. So it wasn't that wasn't many. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they seemed they they we weren't well. I had to speak to someone of like head of press or head of relations at the hustings, and they very rudely were like, "No, absolutely not, under no circumstances." Then, so I was standing outside boxing people and the police came up to us and we're like, excuse me, what are you doing? And we're like, oh, I'm just doing some, doing some box pops. They said, we've had reports that you were casing the hotel <laughs> <laughs> this afternoon. <laughs> Pointed out. So Harry was wearing, so what were we, I think I was oh, wearing. Oh, yeah, the li- <clears throat> two least con- inconspicuous outfits I've ever seen. <laughs> we were wearing like. So I was wearing jeans and a black t-shirt. Harry was wearing jeans, a black t-shirt and a green beanie. Yes, yeah. the Antifa uniform. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you've got to remember everyone else is in suits. Yeah. But, but, then, but, this was, but then Harry was, the policeman was like, someone with his exact description <laughs> pointing at Harry. We've just found this out now. We've just found this out right now. <laughs> this is the first report we've had of someone, a potential like security risk. And I was like, okay, who told you, did like, did the people inside the party tell you this? And they were like, yes. I was they like, gave oh. away the source that quick. Yeah, and I was like, okay, well, can I tell you what, what good. I think? He's a good journalist. <laughs> can I tell you what I think happened? Put Vladimir Putin opposite him, yeah. he might stand up to him. I think someone sent you on slightly the wrong scent because we just arrived in Norwich half an hour ago. I have train tickets to show you. And I think what they've done is just remembered what we were wearing and be like, oh, sorry, officer. <laughs> you, know the, you know how the future Prime Minister of the UK is going to be here? I should probably tell you about the security risk for from hours ago. <laughs> well, she really should have told you earlier. <laughs> That's on me. That's on me. It's actually two boys wearing these outfits and they're over there. <laughs> and you should you should get them. Mm. That that was my experience. The Norwich Hustings. There were a few conversations that were being had between the office and CCHQ that were going so badly, so badly. And at one point they were like, can you tell him to move away from the bins? From the bins? Like, so I don't know what you were doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I might fucking something. But what's I funny is that there... I that energy. <laughs> but, it was a, but all this was happening. I was just trying to do a Vox bot for like an hour. The yeah. police did, we did two hours to do it. The police had taken up 45 minutes of my time. And I had to like, I was then just str- stressedly, stressfully, mm. trying to find... So interview. then we tweeted it and it actually made the BBC... Mm. And then CCHQ gave a statement to the BBC in which they told them that we were making it up. Yeah, I mean, look. Are you going to defend them? No, I'm not going to defend them. I anyway, just, Michael, I don't know. whenever you're free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much of, how much good it does our calls to um, air, our, air the laundry in public, but I guess at this point. I, look, I think once we get to the election, I think things will change quite dramatically, to be honest with you, because... Should we talk about the substance? Sorry, to, to interrupt. But... Of, of Michael Gove? Of the announcement? Yes. Please. No, he will come here himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't give him that cop out, Ed. So, no, go on. An end to no fault evictions, finally, once and for all. God, it's almost as if they've been promising it for like six yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, that's like a, that's a, I hate that term. Silly term. No fault eviction. Do you? Well, it just means the end of a contract. Well, I don't. No, I, necessarily. And, but what it means is that at the end of that contract, the landlord has decided that they're not going to renew it. Yeah. Even if you have to stay. So it's a no-fault eviction. That's not just what it means, though, is it? 
that I, I, if you're including that in your overall statistics, then I can understand the problem. But a no fault eviction is just being like, I'm going to evict you. I've had enough of this. Or even like, because like you want, or, or, serving, you want, or because you want to increase the rent. Yeah, because yeah. in my contract, I can evict you at any point with one month's notice. Yeah. I'm choosing to do that now, not when the tenancy agreement is up, because that would just be the end of the tenancy. Mm -hmm. And, and it, that's 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 what no fault eviction means. It'd right? be a much more European system with like rolling tenancies rather than a strict fixed term. Was it you or Laura that was telling me that in Scotland the tenants decide when the tenancy? Yeah, so this, this already exists in Scotland. This is this is like a real. Um, it's not abnormal. There's there's a lot of well the landlords are angry about this, believe it or not. <laughs> They're not massively in favour of tenants' rights, but it's already happened in Scotland. And I think <clears throat> someone I saw some landlord on Twitter or someone saying so. If I rent my flat for 12 months and want it back, I can't. I can't just get it back. Like, well, yeah, that is that is the case because someone lives there. That's someone's home now. Mm. Because they have the option to sell, but the renter has no option but to rent. Like they, mm -hmm. they've got no option but to be there. Yeah, it's, it's the landlord has plenty of options. Because also when you think about when you think about the tenancy stuff like that, you might have to move. See your family. Your job might be in the local area. You have a 20 minute walk, 20 minute commute. Your child goes to the local school. If you're, well, let's take London as a case example. The housing market is so shit and so difficult, you might end up having to move to a completely different part of London. So your, your business, your um, career is uprooted, your child's friendships are uprooted, or excuse me, their um, education is uprooted. You have to settle in a completely new part of London. Instead of just having a, you should be much more secure in your home. Because I think that's what's lost in this as well. When you move into a flat, it is... Re thinking about it in terms of a year, it's really hard to actually settle mm. for that fixed amount of time. You're like, well I, well, I would make my room nice, but I'll probably be out of here of six months. Well, I would get this for the living room, but there's no point because I have to get rid of it. In and you don't know what months. space you're going to be in the next yeah, time. You might, so you you're not, you might not have space for it. You might not be able to do all these things. I think having the end of fixed terms, having rolling contracts, stuff like that is much, much better for having a home, obviously, mm. at the expense of the landlord. And on top of that, his um, house building pledges, right? Which regular podcast listeners will remember when we had the Centre for Cities on. And they were talking about having a 4.4 .4 million housing shortfall um, in the number of houses built since the end of the Second World War when compared to our European neighbours. So to, um, to combat that, I think it is in less than 10 years, you need to build 600,000 homes every year. Mm -hmm. So un unless he or the Labour Party, and the Labour Party's pledge, I think at last check was 300,000, wasn't it? Was it 300,000 a year? Well, go scrap the house building targets. Sensible. <laughs> yeah. But don't worry, you, so. can do, you can do them on brown fields now. Great. <laughs> you do. So you, you, can build, you can build one house <laughs> on a brown field site. You do need to change the planning system as well. So, like, that planning reform, that needs to happen. Is too, it, but, yeah. But, you know, brown field site as well, a lot of conservationists still get really upset about it because they go, well, there's been these butterflies that are now floating around here, even though it is a disused oil rig. <laughs> Um, so. They're actually, they shouldn't exist in nature, but they do now. So yeah. we've got no choice. <laughs> They're fluorescent yellow. They're ultimately a symptom, but we like them. Yeah. Well, one could consider building a million agroforestry small holdings as a part of your house building targets, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. Where man exists in sim symbiotic, symbiotically with nature, but they per, they I could. don't think they're ready to hear that from Michael Gove. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, for that. I don't think British politics is ready for that. <laughs> no one's ready for that. No one's ready I for that. I keep talking about it. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> but the, you need to get the far. You need to really reor, reor, reorient the discussion of farming in this country. Land, peace, bread. Yeah. yeah. Land, peace, and bread. Yeah. What peace do we need? Uh, in Gaza. Okay. Yeah. In Ukraine. Yeah. It was. It's. Uh, I mean, we're it's not. Russia, war, it's Russian revolution, point. isn't it? Yeah, but we're not. War, is my point. point. Um, should we wrap it up? I mean, we've... do you yeah. want to do the twenty-eight billion? Yeah, you probably should mention it, shouldn't we? The twenty-eight billion. <sighs> yeah. So I guess the Labour Party has looked at the future ecological viability of the planet and decided that it's not worth twenty-eight billion quid. No, no, no. Do you know what I think is really revealing about this? I read. Did you read the Vogue profile of Starmer? No. No. Not okay. yet. I did. But they were, they were, so in it, he says... I saw the photo of him and his wife. Yeah, lovely photo. They look nice. They look great. They say, Starmer says, I always say to my team, always act like you're five points behind. 
And that actually explains so much of what he does. Because <laughs> he needs to, like, you, you don't need to act like this. As yeah. in, like, yeah, this might swing you. This might get you 5% more to catch up with the Tories. It's not going to extend your, like, it's not going to extend your leads. 30, so you're 33 points ahead or whatever. I don't know about that. The thing that really bothers me... I see what you're saying, Ed, because I think, like, you have all this political capital. Spend it. You're doing nothing. Like, he, he, yeah, yeah. He's, That's a, twi- what he's, a, he's yeah. a 20 point cushion. To That's d- what. To, to fuck up. And he's like, well, I better not do anything risky. I'm actually going to self sabotage, if anything. <laughs> 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 ah, this leads embarrassing. This is actually undignified to be this far ahead. I want to make it sporting. I want to, <laughs> <laughs> I want to make it a good old contest. People got really angry because <clears> that was. I said on Newsline I wasn't allowed to finish the point, so mm. I'd like to use the space here, if of that's course. all right. Yeah, Thank floor, you so much. Yours, so it? what I was saying was that Rishi Sunak now has a more ambitious climate policy than Keir Starmer. So if you look at last year in September, Sunak announced his green new vision, yeah? Mm. Sensible green transition. And it was seen as the most uninspiring bit of drivel that anyone has ever experienced, which is... So that was a delay Saying on something. the mandatory phasing out of petrol cars, yeah. the mandatory installation. The, sorry, it was seven bins. Yeah. Um, well, meat, meat tax, tax. Meat tax as well. I mean, they were kind of lies, weren't they? But he did. He rode back on a lot of very important environmental commitments. Yes. Uh, elect- yeah, electric cars, importantly, he extended the date for that. But in that, he committed $2 billion, albeit so £1.6 billion, to the UN Climate Fund. He also introduced the boiler scrappage scheme, which means that if you have a boiler that is not very good, you can get a hell of a government subsidy to replace it. Those are two things that we're already now getting close to the £4 billion that Starmer has pledged to spend every year on green commitments. Mm. If you factor in the half a billion pounds he's given to Tata, the other half a billion pounds that he offered to Jaguar Land Rover, we're getting really close to Starmer's £4 Do you see where I'm going Mm -hmm. with this? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, And the most unambitious thing that um, Keir Starmer did was to get rid of the insulation policy. Do you remember that? That he was going to insulate everyone's homes Mm -hmm. so that you'd have cheaper energy bills and so that you would have less carbon (coughs) emissions and it would just be better. He scrapped that. So you've now got the boiler boiler scrappage scheme much more ambitious than not insulating homes. Yeah. I can understand the Labour Party's frustration with this. Because that number, 28 billion, has kind of become a bit of a stone, a bit of, what's the phrase they always use? Albatross around the neck or something like that? That's what they call it? Yeah. For what is essentially basically just industrial strategy. Like, the UK needs industrial strategy. The government hasn't published one. Darren Jones was fond of saying that when he was back on, when he was uh, chairing that select committee. And this, you know, green prosperity deal, green transition, green new deal, call it what you want, is broadly an industrial strategy, right? And and so, realistically, the actual level of capitalization, the level of investment that's going into it, whether or not it makes amounts to twenty eight billion in the end, you can understand their frustration with like that obsession with that figure. And in the end, whether you know what they put in totals twenty billion or twenty one, or perhaps the you know the fiscal situation changes and they're able to put more in, so they get a little bit angry with it. Fine, but I am just, I am so fed up with being relentlessly told that it is my moral obligation to remove the Conservatives from office and no matter what the Labour Party does, I have to vote for the Labour Party. Mm. I have to vote for the Labour Party as the only credible option Mm -hmm. for removing the Conservatives. When, for all intents and purposes, Keir Starmer is intent on destroying every single aspect of their policy platform that in any way appeals to me. Mm -hmm. I think I've said it before on the pod that the last two things were the 28 billion and the charter, new Charter on Workers' Rights. How long do you think the Charter on Workers' Rights stands before the next general election? Will it still be there in yeah. time? Because at this, at this point, you're literally... I don't think it's good enough as a political leader to say, this other lot are terrible, aren't they? Vote for me. I think a leader's job is to lead, is to set out a political vision, and it's to empower mobilize, energize, be a fucking political force, be a political movement. And managerialism, centrism, caution does not match the scale of the problem that we face. No. And I think very quickly, and again, I've said this before, I know, 
the, the, the scale of the problems we face very, very quickly, his possibly ginormous landslide victory will, will and can be eroded away when people realize that the, the, the image of competency that he projects does not stand up to the challenges of the time. And despite the Conservative Party possibly facing electoral wipeout now, they could be back in government within five years. And that, that iteration of the Conservative Party, it would appear, will be a much more rabid, much more extreme, much more right-wing version of the one that we currently have, if you didn't think that was possible. Yeah, he's going to have the shortest honeymoon. Yeah. When he becomes Prime Minister, he's going to get no great. But then also, like, what, will he... So w the expectations are now so low to what he's going to do. Like, I... They're you, not. You, you can't disappoint me with nothing. They're not, because... Pundits and commentators are saying things like, he's just doing this to get into office. And then when he gets into office, he'll start spending money. It's like, do you understand that you are either like going against the tide of what he wants you to do on comms <laughs> or you are just completely wrong? Yeah. Um, you know, if someone shows you who they are, you should believe them. Yeah. When you look at Angela Rayner this morning, she was talking about trade unions. She did a video and she was talking about joining a union. And I was thinking how incongruous that looked to the, to the Starmer vision. At the moment, it, it looked like a, a, a relic from two years ago. But to, to say join a union, for why? For West Streeting to say that nurses and doctors shouldn't have a pay rise. Why would you join a union under Labour? I'm just, just posing it. Well, that was a cheery episode, wasn't it? I don't like how Labour are trotting out every ex-Tory that's, that's defected to them, being like, look, we're right wing now. <laughs> Isn't this brilliant? We got Nick Candy, <laughs> the Ice Iceland guy. I really yeah. Like. Being like there's the Iceland guy being like, I've changed nothing about myself, <laughs> but suddenly I'm I fit with Labour. <laughs> oh, I like this guy. <laughs> he's got my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing the policy platform. Oh, he's cooking. Look, this is my manifesto. Oh, look, he was cooking there. No, I th I just I think younger voters or people, not even younger voters, people with progressive politics are being told to take their medicine and vote for the Conservative Party. And you can do that if you want to. But in reality, the way to actually... Do you mean Labour? Yes, vote for, vote for the Labour Party. But in reality, the way to achieve, to actually, if you want to get, get a version of your politics, is to apply electoral pressure. It is, you do not just hold your nose and, and vote for them because they are the closest thing to what you want. If you actually want... I don't know, a socialist politics, if you actually want um, a progressive party, then your vote can't just be there for the Labour Party to abuse and take for granted. But then who are you going to vote for? What, where does that exist in this country? It means possibly not voting. Yeah. Um, but you could start small if you want something like, I don't know, a house. <laughs> you could maybe don't get it, write to yourself. your MP and say, I would like to give you my vote, but I would also like some guarantee that you will... Uh, overhaul the local planning mortgage. restrictions. Um, yeah. I don't care that there's a couple of butterflies over the radioactive <laughs> playground. It's, there's two 10 foot butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking hell. Somebody get Chris Packham down there ASAP. We, we can't build any houses because these two 10 foot moth, mothras are going to defend. They keep They're killing the builders. <laughs> <laughs> they keep eating the bulldozers <laughs> and it just makes them stronger but the sewer of discourse is so boring at the moment it's literally like hate Tory love Labour and if you say anything outside of that box the the some guy stopped me in a pub the other day and it was nice we had a really nice conversation and then he said you're being really harsh on Starmer and I was thinking God, we are so bloody centrist I can't even think like, <laughs> like when were we that bad on Starmer mm. um and he was like, he said to me, he was like, you just got to wait. When he gets into office, he'll, he'll fix it. See, I hope, I, when people say things like that, you just hope, you, I hope they're right. That'd be great. I don't think they're right. No. I'd like Starmer to prove us wrong. I'd like him to get rid of Pat McFadden. I think he just, um, when someone, you, if your ambition or reason for suggesting or for su suggesting that someone should vote for someone is because they're currently lying to you. Because that's what that that's mm. essentially what that is, right? It's like no, he doesn't. He's not being honest when he tells you right now that he's going to cut these things. Actually, when he gets into power, he's going to be fucking right yeah. on, dude. So well, okay, well he's lying to you. He was lying to you during the Labour leadership election. He's lying to you now in the contest for a general election. 
Why does that? Why do you think that makes him someone who's worthy of mm -hmm. worthy of your support? It's like marrying a man who shagged your sister. How because is he it? lied to you throughout, and then you say, no, no, no. Once you're married, he'll be very good to you. Oh, so he, he shagged your sister when you were going out with him? Yeah. Right. I think just in general. I've got a better one. I've got a better one. You can, you're improving on that. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> you're dating a man, and he yeah. relentlessly takes away. <laughs> keeps increasing your carbon footprint <laughs> and he says after you get married it'll return to normal <laughs> so <you> <laughs> and, he, and he buys another private jet yes to, to just accompany him you get it I think I, <laughs> I think we can all agree that was a brilliant <laughs> metaphor thank you that was sick any final thoughts before we wrap this up uh, one day is very good on Netflix I enjoyed it would recommend. Do you think we should maybe we'd do, start doing a cultural pod? Yeah, or just I a, thought you a wanted to do another topic then. I was like, no, you can't be serious. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> of just things we've enjoyed. Well, oh shit on Netflix, books. Yeah, you could do like a wizard book segment. I've not read a wizard book. I've <laughs> not read a wizard book in ages. Do you know what I watched the weekend? I watched June of the weekend. It was June sick. one. Yes, so good. It's so good. I'm excited. I'm going to read it. I can't I wait. Two. The two. There's, there's, there's I two. Two or three. There's a second one coming out in do, two um, months. It got hammered by the strike, didn't it? June 2 did. I think so, really? yeah. You two should do a little pod by yourself that's cultural. And it could be like... Just Ollie like, laughing at my recommendations. It could be like things boys love, you know? Jason Kelsey. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> boys and books. Boys and books. Or just dudes rock. Just things that... Dudes rock. Things like... We could do a separate dudes rock podcast every week. Vir Virginia Tech's... Virginia Tech football team coming out to enter the Salmon. Enter Salmon, rather. Mm. I showed my girlfriend that at the weekend. And I was like... She is not enjoying this, but God am I. <laughs> this is unbelievable. What, what, what did you show her? It's the Virginia Tech American football team all entered to enter Sandman by Metallica. Oh, yeah. And it's like... No women in that, either. What, in, the, in Metallica? That's probably why she didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, women, there's women in the crowd. There's women at the football, team, at the football game, and they all jump up and down. It's quite, I quite, I quite like American sports things. Is there anything good about American football? They hit each other so hard. Do they? Yeah. Oh, that's insane. They've all got... It's bad. <laughs> it's really yeah, bad. Yeah, they all get um, CTE, but it's not diagnosed until after they die and they have an autopsy. I know, and their like, brains are just like bleh, mush. I know rugby's bad, right? But I, I genuinely think the pads... Oh, it which means they hit reckless. each other harder, right? Because they have the helmet They also on. use your head... They use your head for the tackle yeah. as well, which is mental. Because in rugby, you don't do that. Well, you can do that. But you're, you're not advised it's not to. It's not the te recommended technique. But, Mr. Spin Pass over here. But all these, all like Patrick Mahomes is not going to remember winning three Super Bowls. Who? The GOAT, Ava. You think he's the GOAT? The GOAT. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kelsey's not going to remember marrying Taylor Swift. No? Do you remember that tweet I sent you about that? Yeah, that was really funny. That was good. Yeah. God, yeah. Have you seen the tweets where you can't spell squirrel? <laughs> squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> right, let's wrap it up. Um, yeah. Thank you for listening to the Politics Joe podcast. If we'll still here. Yeah, <laughs> you got through all that. Congratulations. Um, see you in the subreddit. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.